The clothing industry in Dwarf Fortress is pretty easy to set up, but it can be very difficult to master. In this guide, I'm going to be covering the automation steps surrounding the plant cloth industry as it's the most complicated of the three cloths. All of the work orders discussed in this guide can be used in the silk and yarn industry as well, however, collecting the materials will be slightly different. First, we'll start with the dwarves. In order to avoid negative thoughts, dwarves will need at least one upper body covering, a lower body covering, and a type of footwear. Upper body coverings include shirts, vests, dress, robes, cloaks, and coats. Lower body coverings include trousers and skirts, and footwear includes shoes, socks, and sandals. I typically like producing more than the bare minimum amount of clothing for my dwarves for roleplay reasons, and the numbers I'm going to show you will reflect that. But feel free to substitute what I'm producing with what you want to produce to find what works best for your fortress. In a typical fortress, I'll produce caps, hoods, dresses, cloaks, loincloths, trousers, gloves, mittens, shoes, and socks. That's 10 articles of clothing total per dwarf. I like to target a final population of 120 dwarves, so in total, that's going to be 1200 articles of clothing needed for everyone in the fort. Because clothing degrades from new to the first level of worn after two years, we can divide our 1,200 total articles of clothing by two to get our yearly production target of 600 articles per year. Fortunately, the math is super easy for the rest of the production chain. One piece of clothing requires one cloth, one cloth is made from one thread, and one thread is processed from one thread making plant, meaning we need 600 thread making plants per year to produce all of the clothes we want for a fortress of 120 dwarves wearing 10 articles of clothing each. Figuring out how many farm plots we need to satisfy this demand is much less straightforward. Many of the game mechanics surrounding farming rely on chance and therefore can't be directly calculated like we did with the previous steps. I'm going to explain the average expected value given a few specific criteria are met, but if you'd like to know exactly how the farming mechanics work, the Dwarf Fortress wiki on farming has a great write-up on the topic, I'll have a link in the description. Pigtails produce three harvests per season and grow during two seasons, resulting in six harvests per year. With a legendary planter, a fully fertilized plot, on cavern soil, we can expect 30 plants harvested per tile per year on average. Keep in mind, if you're farming on non-cavern poor soil like I am, your yields will be a quarter of what they would be otherwise, or about 7.5 plants per tile per year. Now we can take our expected demand of 600 plants, divide that by our expected yield of 30 plants per cavern tile, or 7.5 plants per poor soil tile, and get 20 cavern plots or 80 soil plots respectively. Also, quick note, because of how the fertilization mechanics work, multiples of 4 are the least fertilizer efficient. You want to aim as close as you can for a plot with a size 1 less than a multiple of 4. Again, Dwarf Fortress Wiki for specifics. Next, we're going to calculate how many plots we need for our dimple cups to dye all of our clothing to make it a bit more valuable. One dimple cup makes one dimple dye, which can dye one cloth, so we basically just need to match our dimple cup production with our pigtail production. We only get two harvests per season from dimple cups though, so we can only get 10 plants per season per cavern tile. If we grow our dimple cups in the off season of the field we grow our pigtails in, we can grow 20 plants per cavern tile per year. This means we'll need a secondary five tile plot in the caverns growing dimple cups all year to balance out our production. If you're growing in poor soil like me, this secondary plot needs to be 20 tiles. Now for the automation. First, we create a stockpile for pigtails. This stockpile acts as both a buffer and also a limit. If you produce so many pigtails that this stockpile fills up, the extra pigtails will wither in the fields and die. This ensures you don't have a million pigtails hanging out on a long-lived fort. Make sure to link your pigtail stockpile to your farmer's workshop, then we'll set up a work order to process plants. On the conditions section, we want to produce thread if we have any unrotten pigtails available, and as long as we have less than 600 pigtail thread. This number is mostly arbitrary, it just acts as a buffer. Once that's done, link the farmer's workshop to give to a pigtail thread stockpot. Next, we want to go into the labor tab and disable weave all thread into cloth, as we want to control this with a work order. In our weaving work order, we want this order to start if we have any plant thread, and again, set the limit on the cloth to be less than 700. 
If you want, you can set the adjective on this condition to dieable, but because it's just there for a buffer, it doesn't matter much if it's dyed or undyed. Like the farmer's table, the loom should take from the thread stockpile and give to an undyed cloth stockpile. Next, we can set up the dyer's workshop. Link the workshop so it takes from the undyed cloth and dimple dye stockpiles, then set it to give to a dyed cloth stockpile and an empty bag stockpile for your milling industry. To learn how to automate the dye in your milling industry, check out my milling video. The work order you want to set up in your dyer's workshop is the dye cloth job. You'll want to take any cloth you've produced and dye it until you get to about 50 under the limit you set for the cloth work order. 650 for us. A quick note, you could also dye thread before you weave it, there's literally no difference, just the order that you do things in. If you want to guarantee your dwarves are only using dyed cloth to make your clothes, navigate to the labor tab, under work orders, select use only dyed cloth. The next step is to link your dyed cloth stockpile to your clothers workshop, and then set up the work orders. Clothing work orders are a little unintuitive, because instead of setting up our conditions to be something like, if we don't have caps and we have cloth, make caps, we instead want to always make exactly so many caps per year, as long as we have the cloth. This is because we aren't actually removing our old caps from existence like we would with another job. The old caps are still going to be hanging out in the fort until we sell them or destroy them manually. For each article of clothing you want to produce, you'll want to change the when the conditions are checked to yearly. Then set up a condition to check if you have enough cloth to do all of your clothing jobs, in our case 600. Make sure you change the number of items produced to half the number of dwarves in your fortress, or the target amount of dwarves, whichever makes sense for you at the time. Lastly, a really useful tip for managing your old clothing is to set up two clothing stockpiles. The first is linked to take from your clothing workshops, and critically, is set to only take from links. The second stockpile isn't linked to anything, and is set to take from anywhere. This will separate your new clothing from the old, as the old clothes can't enter the linked only stockpile, and the clothing workshop can only give clothes to the new clothes stockpile. This makes it way easier to tell apart when you're in the trade screen, and even more so if your old clothes stockpile is close to your depot. Then you can just tell by distance. That's going to be it for this Dwarf Fortress guide. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to see another topic covered, please drop a comment.